Well, hey, Jason, I'm getting caught up on all things Bohemia Bees on the YouTube channel, and I see you are this close from hitting that 10,000 subscriber mark. Man, that is awesome. You've worked hard at that, and that is so awesome to see your channel growing and doing so well. As a small way to say thank you for all the things that you're doing in this community, uh, all the things that you're doing to be a lighthouse, I'm going to go out to the Queen Yard, and I'm going to pull you three Pepto Pink Appalachian Mutt Queens, and I hope that that genetic diversity helps you in your bee yard. Again, thanks for everything that you do. Let's go out to the Queen Yard and pull you some queens. Hey guys, today we are catching queens for our buddy Jason Crook over at Bohemia Apiary over in Maryland. Uh, Bohemia Bees on the YouTube channel. Jason, we're going to get busy and uh, get you some queens caught. Uh, looks like we're uh, getting towards the end of summer here. And uh, I think it's a great time to be making those late season splits. Let's get you some queens caught. I got a helper. Are you my queen catching helper? Okay, let's get to work. Okay, Jason, there's some Pepto Pink Queens. We're going to get the rest of our queens caught and get these shipped right out to you. Hope you enjoy them. Good morning, it's Jason from uh, Bohemia Bees and those queens from Greg at Nature's Image Farms have made their way to Bohemia Apiary on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. We're gonna put them in a queenless hive that we know is queenless, but we're gonna take a look at that hive because there's a couple things that uh, if you were a new beekeeper or even, uh, even uh, maybe even a beekeeper that's been doing for a couple years um, and you wanna see what you should look for and how you should set that colony up. Naturally, we know the colony we're looking at is queenless uh, but let's take some uh, deeper look into that hive and see how we know that um, and what we can do to make sure it's ready to accept one of these new queens from Nature's Image Farm. Let's take a look. Okay, so we've got this uh, single deep 10 frame that we're working on. Uh, it was um, one that was going sideways for us a couple weeks back and we noticed that it uh, was not producing a lot of brood. Um, very little brood left now, so we're, we're lucky enough to kind of catch it to ensure that, you know, through our normal regular inspections, uh, when we don't see uh, naturally uh, larvae in all stages, eggs, uh, we start to look for that queen. We don't see the queen, and, you know, a week or so goes by, we still don't see any more eggs. So with that scenario, uh, we know we definitely have a, uh, a queenless colony. Uh, when you get your queens uh, from Greg or whomever or from us or who, wherever you get your queens from, you want to keep them shaded. So we put them over to the side over here, kind of out of the sun, um, and we'll open one of them up and put them in uh, here. And we'll just look at that in a second. But a couple things you want to see when you're when you're looking at a queenless hive. Naturally, um, this hive has a ton of resources because it's 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 honey bound. And what does that mean <clears throat> when you had a flow and there's no place that the queen is laying? the bees go into a, a mode in which they are just bringing in honey. And you can see that because if you look at this frame here, it's all backfill. There's not a lot of spaces for a queen to lay, right? You've got a lot of um, bee coverage. And if you look inside the cells, I don't know if you can see this or not, all that glistening throughout majority of the frame. And this is a center frame. This is a frame where she should be on, she should be laying. Um, and, and there's no eggs, no larva, right? Let's take a look at another frame.
Okay, so this frame has a little bit more brood left on it, so you can see capped brood. But wherever there was emerged brood, they've backfilled with honey of gun, nectar. Um, lots of capped honey over here. Um, we're gonna make sure that the, there are no eggs in between, no larva. We're, and we're at the point where we're preventing a laying worker from occurring because that laying worker would start after there was really no brood. Um, I don't know if there's a rule of thumb for uh, preventing a laying worker, but I usually use in my apiary, when they're two weeks or 10 days, 10 weeks to two weeks, 10 days to, to 10 to 14 days beyond the last bit of cap brood emerging. And, and sometimes even sooner than that, right? Um, if there's a queen cell, if there's queen cells in the colony, because you've inserted a frame of brood and you know, naturally the eggs have matured to a cap brood state and there's queen cells, that helps as well. Um, it's really that lack of queen pheromones over a period of time that will have a worker bee, a standard worker bee like you see here, switch on uh, her ovaries and her ability to lay eggs. Now they're unfertilized eggs, so you'll just get a mess of drone uh, eggs uh, being laid and it will create a colony that's just a mess to take care of. Um, but what we want to do is we want to make sure we stop that so we've got a mated queen. We know it's a queenless colony and we're going to go ahead and insert her in and show you how we do that. Now, she doesn't have room to lay in here, so we're gonna go ahead and try to reorganize some things to give her some room. You know, I have that frame that has some cap root on it, pushed to the middle. Um, this frame on the side that I pulled out is full of, of again, honey. Um, we're gonna shake the bees off of it back in here, and we're gonna put in here a frame that has some open comb for her to lay on. Um, and then hopefully as we are progressing through the dearth, we're not really feeding this colony they'll start to clean out some of those open cells that they've backfilled um, and give her place to lay. But we'll have to monitor that over the next, you know, seven to 14 days. Let's get another frame. Okay, so we've gotten a frame that has some drawn comb on it. It's completely empty. And we're gonna insert that in the hive. <clears throat> and then let's get our queen. Okay, one thing I also like to do is I like to take that queen and lay her on the hive and just see how the bees react to her, right? So that's a queen now first being introduced into the colony to see if they, you know, come at that cage to see if they're gonna try to be aggressive towards it. Um, they tend to be a little bit interested, curious. Uh, I think we got their new queen. You see they're starting to make their way around to the cage. As you can see here, they're not looking to sting or get at that queen. They're looking to connect and they're sticking proboscis in testing, see? Which means that they're looking to accept this queen um, and that's a good sign. So let's go ahead and still put her in. Now we leave the fondant in, we leave, we don't direct release. We leave this here so that she can uh, uh, be accepted over the next few days. Uh, these these uh, worker bees will chew out the fondant to allow her, and we'll come back and check on her in two to three days, but they'll attend to her through the screen uh, while they accept her into her colony. When we column. install our queens, we install them so that they are, this is face up, the tube is face up, and it, it basically points out this direction. And that way, if any uh, workers uh, or attendants that are in here die, they fall to the bottom and then they won't fall to block this and give more work to the worker bees uh, to pull out that, uh, to let that queen be released. Let's go ahead and close the hive up and uh, wrap up. All right, so we have our new queen installed uh, from Nature's Image Farm, and we are really excited about having additional genetics in our apiary. Uh, we have genetics that span the U.S. here at Bohemia Apiary. Uh, we're proud of that. We're proud of the fact that we can, uh, we can actually have that community of people to, to get good queens from, whether it be just from, from Jason Huff at Wood Camp in Western Maryland, or whether it be, uh, you know, Jose the, out in California, Corey uh, with some of his bee stock that's fantastic uh, with the help of Natalie a couple times. Uh, but Corey's stock is in this apiary. <clears throat> and now I have Nature's Image Farm uh, Greg's stock in here as well. Again, a good blend. And it all kind of mushes together with my Bohemia Mutts, right? So that diverse genetics helps us to try to find the right 
mix here for the eastern shore of Maryland, my region, to have uh, a stronger resistance to pests like mites, like the varroa mites, uh, a better resistance to any other the pests that may be coming through uh, and some of the diseases that are brought with uh, the varroa mite. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, having a colony that has good amount of volume of bees, that has strong genetics, uh, is, is, is the key to a success in an apiary. So making that diversification start with the queen is the most important. Um, and so uh, we're going to wrap it up here. And I just want to uh, thank everyone. Thank Greg from Nature's Image Farm uh, for helping us get some of this genetics, additional genetics in our apiary. Uh, we finally have a Pepto queen. We have a pink Pepto queen that we've been talking about for a little bit um, from Greg. Uh, and uh, I think it's important that we uh, we just continue to do that uh, and continue to diversify our genetics. So thanks for watching, everyone. I know this was a, a fairly long video, maybe, maybe not. Um, it depends on, uh, on your perspective, but I appreciate all the support over the years. We have a contest coming up. We're going to be giving away lots of stuff um, here in September. So make sure you uh, uh, follow the link for the 10,000 uh, subscriber giveaway and follow the instructions to be entered in that so you could win some great prizes. But for now, at Bohemia Apiary, uh, well, let's do it differently. At Bohemia Apiary, we're being the change today. Like Greg says, be the lighthouse, be the change. Because beekeeping for us is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thanks for watching, everyone.